Oh hey! Didn't see you there. Today we're going to be showing you how to study for AP Biology. And in order to do so, you need to make some mac and cheese. Why? Because, soon, <laughs> you need to reattach your phosphates by undergoing cellular respiration. And in order to do that, you need some... bio you're always going to be given lecture notes and these are to be filled out before the lecture is given not while the lecture is given and the reason for that is because before the lecture is given it's useful to have a slight understanding of what's going to be talked about and then while the lecture is given you can answer questions and sometimes even challenge yourself to answer other questions that you may not know and the reason to challenge yourself is because under stressful situations such as a large classroom, it, it sticks in your head more when you think through a problem and then figure out the solution rather than just repeat what's given on the notes. So then my second piece of advice to you is to go home and review these lecture notes. And the reason why is because it will stick better. And my second piece of advice to you is to actually go home and review these notes. And the reason why is because you can figure out what you know, solidify what you know, and then figure out what you don't know. And then the next day you can come to school or to the class and you can ask questions and then solidify your understanding even more. So an online source that I really like to use is the Bozeman video. So you can go on YouTube and search Bozeman AP Bio and it will come up with tons of videos that provide really solid summaries. So you can either use these summaries to introduce yourself to a new section or chapter or you can use it at the end prior to a test so that you can make sure that you understand all that was taught. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to talk about is study guides. So these are most useful right before a test. Um, and you can create it any way. It can be pictures, it can be analogies, or it, it can be typed or even handwritten. So an example of pictures was, one advice to do is draw your own diagrams. This is an example of cellular respiration. Um, and then I also have an example of photosynthesis. So you can color or color coordinate whatever helps you best to memorize the information. <laughs> The next thing I'm going to talk about is references and analogies. These are super important to and keys to remember important pieces of information. So I'm going to give some examples of references and you can either use them or create your own. But I would recommend that you create your own so that it's your own connection between the material and your analogy. An example of an analogy. So I'm going to talk about enzyme inhibitors, but I'm first going to explain it. So a substrate is something that normally binds to the active site of an enzyme. A competitive inhibitor um, mimics a substrate but competes for the active site. And a non-competitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme but it's away from the active site and changes the shape. So in this case, a substrate would be a normal couple. So the substrate would be a girl or a boy and the enzyme would also be a girl or boy. Um, the competitive inhibitor would be Mr. Steal Your Girl because it mimics a substrate, but it competes for either the boy or girl. Lastly, the non-competitive inhibitor would be a low-key side chick that steals your man and ruins your relationship. This low-key side chick binds away from the active site and ruins the relationship of the couple. <laughs> oh, hey. So another method for studying is to use online resources. Our textbook has an online website that has a bunch of study materials that could help you out. All you have to do is you go to the drop down menu, you go ahead and click a chapter, and I'm on meiosis and sexual lifestyle cycles. <laughs> and um, the things I find really helpful are the animations. So I'll, right here is the meiosis animation. And it just walks you through, it talks, but we're not going to listen to it right now. Um, it walks you through the different steps of meiosis and it's really helpful, especially if you're a visual learner. They also have um, descriptions of what happens on the side, which are also really easy to read and easy to comprehend. So I find these videos super duper helpful and they have it for every chapter. So it's definitely something you should check out and use. <laughs> hey future 
AP Biology students. Um, I'm here to talk about some study skills for that will help you do well in the AP Bio exam. Uh, one way that I thought was really effective in my own personal take on it is study groups. Uh, in a study group, I feel like talking out kind of the processes or different things about AP Biology really helps you come to a better understanding. And if you don't understand something, then you can always ask the other group members if they understand it, and if not, you can figure out together. They can also quiz you, which is also really helpful in memorizing the material uh, because it kind of simulates uh, what's going to be on the AP exam because it's not just, oh, write this down, it's you have to draw back the knowledge. So by them quizzing you, it really helps you retain the information. Tips for studying! <laughs> don't cram! <laughs> Drink coffee! Don't hang around with friends too much and waste your time. Take some breaks! Coffee! <laughs> First, let me hop out the motherfucker. Porsche, I don't wanna if that ever don't see like a horse. I be ballin' on the street. Got me feelin' like.